Hey everyone, my name is John Savile and welcome to another onboarding to Azure video. And in this video, I want to look at Azure Private Link, um, a piece of new functionality that has some very interesting use cases. But first, let's kind of take a step back. I can think about in Azure, I have a lot of different services. I can think about there's things like storage accounts, there are database services, there's things like app service plans, PaaS services, there's all these different types of service available to me. And then I can also create virtual networks. And in those virtual networks, I can go ahead and place different types of resource. These could be IaaS resources like virtual machines. They could be certain types of container resources and other things as well. And I may create services that want to leverage some of the other services available in Azure. That's very logical. But I may also want to restrict those. Now, these services have public endpoints, i.e. I typically access them via the internet. If I want to restrict from the VNet which of these services I can use, there is something called service tags. And service tags I can leverage in my network security groups, which are sets of rules I can assign to subnets in the VNet or even NICs themselves that can control what traffic is allowed to flow. But it only gets as granular as this type of service at a region level. So I can't restrict it just to a particular instance of that service, i.e. just a particular storage account. And one of the challenges with that is data exfiltration. The idea that there's some malicious insider that yes, can get to my corporate storage account or my corporate database and then copy the data to another storage account, another database. So while service tags are part of my rules at NSGs, my network security groups, the granularity is only for a region level at a service. Now on the other end of that, when I think about the actual services themselves, I can use service endpoints. This enables me to make particular subnets in particular VNets known to the service. And then on the service side firewall, I can restrict, well, who's allowed to talk to that service. For example, I could block all internet communication or restricted to certain IPs and only allow particular subnets from particular VNets. And in all those cases, I'm still accessing via that public endpoint, but the traffic's not going out to the internet and then back in again. It does stay on the Azure network. It kind of gets turned around and routed in an intelligent fashion. So what's private link? So the idea of private link is for these sort of services, there's actually gonna be an IP placed inside my VNet that kind of represents a particular instance of a service. So for example, a storage account, Azure SQL Database, Cosmos DB, and this, this will grow in time. So now I can think about, instead of accessing the public endpoint for that service, what I'm actually going to do is I'll access this particular IP. And that IP address will stay consistent. It's not gonna change for the life cycle of that private link. So I don't have to worry about it changing. If I'm using Azure DNS, there'll be a name kind of set up for this I can leverage. If not, I would probably go ahead and add a DNS name that represents the service via that private IP address. And this IP address, it's important to understand, it's just a representation, a placeholder, a moniker of this service. It's not like this IP address is actually used for the ongoing routing of the data to that service. If I think about underneath all of the networking, there are Hyper-V hosts with um, switches, with virtual filtering platforms, all these components. When the data, that traffic flows and it sees this private link IP address as the target, at that point when it hits the, the switching, it will just send it directly to the service. So don't think about this as really a real IP that then is, is routing through. There's clever stuff done behind the scenes that says, hey, look, I see this IP. It means it's going to this service here. I'll just kind of send it directly. So now we have this private IP, it's this representation. So now I can use that IP as part of my network security groups as part of my control. So I can only access this particular instance 
of the storage service or Azure SQL database or whatever else in the future. Um, and I can use that for virtual appliances, I can use it for the Azure Firewall, for third-party NVAs, whatever I want to do there. And that traffic is going to be the most direct path possible. Hey, I'm referencing this private link IP address in my application and it's going to go straight to the service. And because it's just an IP address, yes, it's going to work in that VNet. But now I can think about, hey, look, I have a peered network. Well, things in this network would be able to go to that IP and then go to that service. I might also have on-premises resources that have some kind of connection to that VNet. Maybe it's Express Route, maybe it's a site-to-site -site VPN. But again, if I go to that IP, it's going to go to that service. I don't have to have like Express Route, Microsoft peering anymore to make the traffic to that service go over the express route. If I just have private peering, well, hey, that's a target. It's going to go to that service. So I have this great, very granular ability of a particular instance that I can now reference and route traffic to. But it's not just Microsoft services. If I'm a provider of services, well, I have kind of my own network. Do I've got my own network over here. And it could be a different region, different subscription, different Azure AD tenant, doesn't matter. I've got some service. I'm using a standard load balancer to front my service. I can private link that thing into other people's VNets as well. So now they can get to my service. It's a great way to make my service available to them. It doesn't even have to be another company. Maybe I'm a really big organization and I've got lots of VNets and I'm actually struggling with IP space. Maybe my IP spaces actually overlap and I've got certain virtual networks that offer a service that I want to make available to other VNets, but I can't peer them because the IP address space overlaps. Well, this rescues that now. I could have a completely another separate VNet and maybe they're both using 10 dot whatever. So the same IP scheme. So I can't peer them. I can't do normal connections. And I have this great service behind a standard load balancer that I want to make available to other virtual networks in my organization. Oh, I just private link that thing into the other VNets. It's one IP address in that IP space. And the traffic will now go and be sent to that service. There's actually a number of different scenarios I can use this for, and it's actually really powerful. So that's Private Link in a nutshell. It's the ability for Microsoft services, PaaS services, to be represented now as an IP address, that placeholder in my VNet, for very granular control of the traffic flow. It's going to be straight on that backbone, the most direct path possible. It's for third parties to now offer services into my VNet. And even for me as an organization, hey, if I've got overlapping IP spaces that I can't network here or I don't want to, I can still make them available into other VNets. So if you found this useful, uh, good luck.